Welcome to another interesting video. In our previous video, we've discussed decision making under certainty, decision making under uncertainty, decision making under risk. We have been able to explain all these concepts using typical examples. In this video, we want to talk about decision tree. How do we analyze this decision situation using decision tree? At the end of this lesson, learners should be able to use the decision tree to analyze the decision situation. I'm Abdullah Okoyemi Faladi. I'm the operation research facilitator, which would explain the details of how to analyze the decision situation using the decision tree. What do we mean by decision tree? A decision tree is one of the tools being used for a diagrammatic presentation of a sequential and multi-dimensional aspect of a particular decision problem for systemic analysis and evaluation. So it is a tool. The message there is decision tree is a tool that involves the use of diagrams to show the sequential and multi-dimensional aspect of particular decision problem. When using decision tree, your decision problem, the alternative course of action, the state of nature, and the likely outcomes, that's the probability estimate of alternatives. The likely outcomes of alternatives are diagrammatic or graphically depicted as branches and sub-branches of a horizontal tree. Now, I'm happy to tell you that decision tree is highly useful to a decision maker in multi-stage situation, which involve a series of decisions, each dependent on the preceding one. So when you have a multi-stage situation, which involves an iterative decision process, such that each dependent on the preceding one, decision tree is best used in that situation. More so, decision tree analysis allows you to understand simply by inspection. You can view it. It's, it's a visualization approach, which shows various assumptions and alternatives in a graphic form. And it is more easier to understand than the abstract analytical form we have been used to. As so let's move into a typical, typical example of how to solve problem, how to analyze decision situation using decision tree. So we have this payoff table, which represents the possible profit associated with erection of a building on the land. I want to try to draw a decision tree for the problem and also determine the, op the best optimal cost of action. So this is very simple compared to the analytical approach. Here we go. You can see we have three states of nature. Shopping complex, D1. High rise houses, D2. Blocks of flat, D3. So this will be the first three branches that will come out of a node. And you can see that here. So we have three branches. D1, D2, and D3. For each of these decision alternatives, we have how many states of nature? We have three states of nature, low, medium, and high. So that means from each decision alternative, three branches comes out of it. And that is why you can see here that in decision alternative D1, we have three branches coming out of it. Same thing for D2, three branches coming out of it. Same thing for D3, three branches coming out of it. And also you can see that there's probability estimates for each state of nature. We have 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.45.
and that's what we apply here 0 0.25 0 0.3 0 0.45 0 0.25 0 0.3 0 0.45 0 0.25 0 0.3 0 0.45 and at the same time we look for the corresponding payoff value so for d1 the first branch takes 200 payoff value which is under the 0 0.25 probability estimate 100 for medium which is under 0 0.3 probability estimate 400 for high which is under 0 0.45 probability estimate and that's what we have here under d1 so we apply the same thing under d2 and we apply the same thing under d3 and from here from this decision diagram decision tree you can see that it will be easier for us to determine the expected monetary value for D1, which is going to be 0 0.25 times 200 plus 0 0.3 times 100 plus 0 0.45 times 400. The same thing goes to D2. The expected monetary value for D2 will be 0 0.25 times 100 0 plus 0 0.3 times 150 plus 0 0.45 times 300. When you also go to expected monetary value for D3, now be 0 0.25 times 300 plus 0 0.3 times 200 plus 0 0.45 times 400. And that makes it very easier to compute, unlike when you are computing directly from the table. And from that, we have the computation here. So the expected monetary value for D1 gives 260, for D2 gives 205, and for D3 gives 285. So in conclusion, for best optimal cost of action, we recommend that the decision maker should adopt decision alternative D3, since it is a decision alternative with the highest expected value. I hope you've learned one or two things in this video. To enjoy more videos and to learn more through this channel, press like, subscribe if you are yet to do so, and press the notification bell. We have some practice questions for you to practice and evaluate yourself, to challenge yourself on your understanding about the decision tree from this short video. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.